Hello, friends. This is Ben Pierce, Senior Pastor at Fuquay Verena Baptist Church, coming to you live, not live, from 301 Studios. And we are so looking forward to this because we're going to wrap up Romans chapter 8 today. It has been a long summer as we looked at Romans 6 and we talked about how we reckon ourselves dead to sin and what, what we have done when we've uh, been baptized in Christ and the old man's been crucified. But we still have that flesh, Romans 7. And who's going to deliver me from that? But that's where Romans 8 comes in because the very first verse of Romans 8 says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So as we looked at Romans 8 and we said this is the normal Christian life, we had verses one through four, and we talked about the deliverance that we have because of Christ, and now the Spirit lives in us. Verses five through 11, we had the differences of the normal Christian life. 14 through 17 was the delights of the normal Christian life, that we've been adopted, that we are His. The diligence in verses 18 through 27, and that was the diligence of, of making sure that we are walking with Him and the groaning that takes place. Remember, we said creation, Christian, and comforter. But 28 through 30 was the determination of the Christian life, normal Christian life. Now we said that it was God's determination, one, to carry out his plan, but also to fulfill his promise. Today, we're going to take a look at verses 31, and we're going to go all the way to the end. And if I had to call this, since we're sticking with the Ds, how about the distinction of the normal Christian life? Think about all the promises we've been made in Romans 8. They are yours, and they are yours to keep. Now, today, I'm going to be doing this a little bit different. I'm going to ask if you would, maybe you want to get your Bibles and follow along as we go through verses 31 through 39. Now, I'm going to be using the New American Standard. All right? You may have a different version. That's okay. But uh, I want you to follow along because rather than hear me talk, let's just hear the Bible. And I think it would be a whole lot better. Oftentimes, when I'm in my sprint class at, uh, at the gym, uh, the teacher, if it get to a certain point, she'll say, no words are needed, just finish. And so that's where we are here. No words needed. We just need to let God speak. So in verses 31 through 33, you are secured in Christ. And how are you secured in Christ? By his labor or by his work. Let's look at verses 31 through 33. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Now listen to this. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. In other words, the Almighty God, the judge, the Supreme Court judge of the judges of judges. He's the one that nobody can overturn. He hits the gavel and he says, you're innocent in Christ. You are secure in Christ. But then let's look at this. Verse 34, you are secured in his life as well. Verse 34, we're going to see his price, his power, and his position. Listen to this. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God the Father, who also intercedes for us. We saw his price, we saw his power, we see his position. But then in verses 35 through 39, we are secured in Christ's love. He gives us a love that is enduring, enabling, and everlasting. You are secure in Christ no matter what we face. Listen to verses 35 through 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulations or stress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But listen, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquered. That's who we are in Christ. We're overwhelming conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Man, you are secure no matter what the world throws at us and no matter how crazy things get. Know that you are secure in Christ's life, Christ's love, and Christ's labor. Now, 
Just a little housekeeping if I can. We're going to be back with you September 3rd as we jump back into Who Died and Made You King. Looking forward to that because we're going to be looking at some kings that were uh, maybe king for maybe two or three years versus one that was king for 52 years. And you would think if he's been king for 52 years, there'd be a whole lot written about him, but really there's only about maybe 20 verses, give or take, written about the one that's 52 years reign. But you be back, and I look forward to seeing you on September 3rd, and then we'll start back here on site on September 4th with our meals on uh, Wednesday night, discipleship training classes, little Bible study, Awanas. Man, it's going to be good jumping back into the fall. I hope you've had a good summer, and I hope you've enjoyed the normal Christian life. But more importantly, let's go live it. God bless you if you're quiet.